Hey everyone, this is Simon again from Socioscholar. Today I'm here with a lesson on one of the most important cornerstones of social theory, functionalism. Here's how this series on functionalism will unfold. During this lesson, I'm going to talk about what functionalism is and who the main functionalist theorists were. Then we will see what is meant by classical evolutionism. In the next two lessons after that, I will dig deeper and talk about Parsonian functionalism, and finally I will wrap up this series with Lumen systems theory. So let's get started. Functionalism can be thought of as the has-been star of sociological theory. It's experienced peaks of fame and moments of decline. Functionalism was a key perspective in classical social theory, with thinkers like Emile Durkheim and Herbert Spencer playing a central role in its development. Fast forward to the mid-20th century, and Talcott Parsons extended functionalism even further. During the 1950s and early 1960s, Parsonian functionalism became the leading approach to social theory mainly in the United States. It aimed to give a comprehensive account of all kinds of systems, including social systems, by incorporating ideas from classical theorists like Durkheim and Spencer, Parsons developed a systematic theory that attempted to show the essential functional processes and mechanisms responsible for social order. However, starting in the late 1950s, critics began to argue that Parsonian functionalism placed too much emphasis on the harmonious aspects of social order. These critics claimed it downplayed or ignored issues of conflict. By the early 1970s, it appeared that the Parsonian system had fallen apart, and its goal of providing an all-encompassing paradigm for social theory and research had come up short. So, let's really get into the idea behind functionalism. I think an automobile repair shop is the best place to do so. At its core, Functionalism is about looking at society as a big machine with lots of different parts that all have a role to play. It's a way of seeing how everything connects. Think about how your car runs, the engine, the tires, the steering wheel, even the air conditioning. Each part has a specific role, and they all need to work together to get you down the road. Functionalism is the same kind of idea, but for society. It says that every part of society, like families, governments, schools, and even you and me, we all serve a purpose. But here's the kicker. Functionalism isn't just about saying everything has a function. It's also about balance and order. It argues that, in the end, all these different parts of society work together in harmony to maintain a sense of stability and order. Imagine if you tried to drive with flat tires or a broken engine. It would be chaos, right? The same goes for society. If one part isn't working right, it can lead to problems. That's the crux of functionalism, understanding how all these societal parts interact to keep our social vehicle running smoothly. All right, let's talk about the big players in the functionalism game. The squad of functionalist all-stars includes some heavy hitters, but we'll focus on the main three. Emile Durkheim, Herbert Spencer, and Talcott Parsons. Durkheim was like the early pioneer who mapped out the territory. He was fascinated by how societies stick together, especially large ones with a lot of different people and jobs. Durkheim suggested that it's all about interdependence. We rely on each other to keep things running smoothly like different parts in a machine. He developed the concept of social facts, norms and values that exist outside of us but still exert control over our actions and interactions and overall contribute to the stability and functionality of a society. Then you've got Herbert Spencer, another of the early trailblazers. Spencer was a big fan of biology and he brought this into sociology. He saw societies as evolving, just like organisms, from simple forms into complex ones. And just like Durkheim, he thought every part of society had its role to play in maintaining the system. Spencer's social Darwinism put forward that societies like species evolve through a survival of the fittest process. And last, but certainly not least, is Talcott Parsons. 
He took functionalism into the 20th century and gave it some new shine. Parsons argued that all parts of society are interrelated and work together to form a complete system. When each part does its job, society remains balanced and stable. His grand theory, the Agile Schema, broke down this process into four main functions, adaptation, goal attainment, integration, and latency. Now, these guys had their differences, but they all believed in the idea that society is like a well-oiled machine with different parts working together. This concept became the backbone of functionalism, shaping it into the theory we know today. Although functionalism might sound like a conservative social stance and outdated, it's not just antique set of theories collecting dust on the shelf. Today, functionalist ideas still sneak into how we understand and navigate our world. In education, for example, we can see how schools don't just teach math and literature, but also socialize students into societal norms, which is a perspective right out of Durkheim's playbook. In the realm of health, we can see the idea of sickness as a role that has its own rights and responsibilities, which is an echo of Parsons' work. And even in the study of technology and social media, some scholars examine how these new platforms function to bind us together or tear us apart. In addition, even if you are a critic of modern functionalists, you need to know its basic in order to be able to challenge them. This concludes my first lesson on functionalism. Don't let your brain go on vacation just yet. Tackle our quiz and see if you've mastered the art of sociological wizardry or if you're just a sociology muggle. See you in the next lesson, which will be on classical evolutionism in sociology.